Harbin is extremely cold. It is so freezing cold. It feels like your skin is just peeling off. Let's make men of ourselves, Jeff. <laughs> I love that there's this entire world of ice and not a single handrail to be found. I don't like the look of this. <laughs> We've never seen anything quite like this. I'm Jeff Hutchins, and I'm a photographer. I'm Peter Hutchins, and I'm a filmmaker. We grew up in China, and now we're going back. To capture China in its moment of change. I can't believe we're back in Harbin after all these years. Back? He was like two when we left. I don't think he has any idea what Harbin's all about. Hey, I've seen pictures, and it looks cold. It's freaking cold. How many layers you got on? I'm sporting five pairs of pants, four jackets, a hat and gloves. I'm sweating. <laughs> you know, it doesn't seem all that cold out here. I, I'm not really seeing anybody else dressed uh, that's quite like this. This is kind of ridiculous. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, much better. I know, it was like we had our own personal saunas on before. Look at this place. You know, what I remember about Harbin is Mao suits and coal dust, basically. Everything was gray and drab, and now we got George Clooney up top here on an Omega ad looking out over the central square of Harbin and you know McDonald's, Adidas, Nike. This place looks nothing like what it used to look like when we were here before. Yeah, absolutely. And talk about change. Harbin has been changing for basically the last hundred years, from the Russians to the Japanese, now back to the Chinese. You know, it's really trade is what it's all about now. When Jeff and I grew up here, Harbin was colorless and cold. So cold, there were days when our parents wouldn't let us go outside. But it never seemed to stop the locals. I have little flashes in my memory, crazy people doing crazy things in the cold. And I remember images of onion domes, old trains, and gritty industrial neighborhoods. We first came to Harbin in 1981 when our dad took a job teaching English at Harbin Teachers University. He was the first American to teach at the school, and for him, it was the opportunity of a lifetime. Even though he knew next to nothing about the city, it was his dream to teach English in China. Now Pete and I are having our own opportunity of a lifetime, to come back to China and to the city where we spent time as kids, to get a sense of how the city has changed in the last 20 years. At the start of the 20th century, Harbin was the center of construction for the Chinese Eastern Railway, which eventually linked up with the Trans-Siberian Railroad in Russia. This massive construction project brought hardy and hardworking men and women into Harbin from all over China and helped the city to cement its reputation as a place where only the strong can survive the long, bitter winters. But to see for ourselves what's going on in modern Harbin, we're gonna need a little help. Huang is a friend of ours from Beijing who spends a lot of time in Harbin on business. And his English is really good, which means he's the perfect guide to show us around Harbin and talk to some of the people about living in such cold, harsh conditions. I mean, it's cold, my, my, my fingers are frozen and my nose hairs are frozen, but, you know, other than that, I'm doing fine. <laughs> I mean, you know, this is a warm day. Like, it was colder a couple of days ago. Harbin is located in the northernmost province in China, near its border with Russia. It's only about 2,200 kilometers from Harbin to the Arctic Circle, making the winters long and extremely cold. From November through March, temperatures in Harbin average below zero degrees Celsius and frequently can get as low as 20 below and stay that way for days and sometimes even weeks. But instead of being victims of their climate, people in Harbin follow the long-standing cultural tradition of embracing the cold. 
and there's one chili tradition that really shows the fortitude of the people here. So when Huang suggests that Jeff and I should try it, we agree to give it a whirl. It's not the smartest decision we've ever made. So this is where they go ice swimming in winter. Oh, no way. It looks like a swimming pool, but it's part of the river, actually. Oh, this yeah. looks like bad news. Oh, man, look at that. There's already a layer of ice forming. So you guys are gonna stay here, and I go find one of the best ice swimmers in Harbin. The temperature outside this morning is minus 14 degrees Celsius. You have got to be kidding me. Looking on the bright side, the water has to be much warmer, like a degree or so above freezing. But it really can't be all that bad. Since we grew up in Harbin, we must have some of that tough Harbin spirit in us somewhere, right? I think I'm gonna have a whole new appreciation for ice cubes after this. Look at this. I think we might be ice cubes after this, Jeff. Here comes the ice swimming queen. Oh, wow. Hello. 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 Uh, Fourteen years. Wow. We've heard that she's named the queen of ice swimming. Why exactly is she named that? Well, it's kind of a nickname. It's just like people like me because I think uh, first of all, you know, there are fewer women than men who participate in the sports, and I'm kind of younger than other women. She's still alive, so that's a good yeah. thing. <laughs> and what, what are the benefits? I mean, why do you subject yourself to this every day? She tells us that ice and snow are part of Harbin culture, and that a friend told her taking a daily plunge in ice water makes you stronger, healthier, and happier, if it doesn't kill you first. She decided to try it once, and she's been hooked ever since. What do you think? I think we got to do it. But the only thing is, we have to go in at the same time. Same time? Deal? Deal. <laughs> Swimmers start pouring out of the dressing room to the cheers of a few hundred people who've assembled to watch the madness. And without too much fanfare, the insanity begins. We notice the men and women taking the plunge are a lot older than us. Our new friend, the Ice Queen, is the exception. And if you get tired of ice swimming, there's always ice dancing. I believe that's a waltz. No one waits too long on the ice diving blocks before diving into the ice water. And no one stays in very long, which for two amateurs is extremely good news and survivors receive the congratulations of the crowd. I don't think I'm ever gonna live this down. <laughs> a little too soon, it's our turn. We enter to a smattering of applause. All right. And the sound of our knees knocking together in the sub-zero temperatures. This is cold. You all right, ready? Yeah. Okay. okay. Ready? One, two, three. Okay. Note to self. When an older brother says he's got your back, he's lying. What's going on? Freaking cold! Oh, oh, I cannot feel my toes. I cannot feel my arms. I can't feel anything. Belong. I'm not cold! You have no idea how cold this is. There's almost no way to describe this. It feels like your skin is just peeling off. It is so freezing cold. Yeah, I there's no there's no I can't even talk or think. It just feels like your whole body is one piece of ice. Okay, that is invigorating. I'll tell you what, 
that is what makes the people in Harbin so tough. Yep. I mean, can you imagine not only doing that once, but coming out here every single day, braving the cold, and like thriving out here, not just surviving, people out here thriving. Yeah. I love you, man. Uh, love you too. <laughs> Oh. All right, let's get one. Oh, man. I think it's because I'm getting crazy, but I don't even feel cold anymore. I don't feel anything. <laughs> so maybe we're not as prepared for the cold as the people of Harbin. But fortunately, there is something that will help us get our blood circulating again. And for us, it's not a moment too soon. In China, there's a remedy for everything. After our icy swim in the river, there seems like nothing better to warm us up than a traditional Chinese foot massage. Maybe this is how people in Harbin make it through the tough weather, with a little relaxation after a long winter's day. Oh wow, this is one hell of a concoction. This looks like very dirty bath water. Don't you think, Pete? Yeah, it smells like black licorice or a mix of herbs and stuff. What's in here? This is a drug. It's 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 a drug. He said this is some kind of herbal mixture, and I guess the main purpose is to stimulate blood flow, which probably uh, the ice swimming sort of stopped all that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I know my, my extremities were killing me out there, aren't yeah. they? It's gone from pleasure to pain in the blink of an eye, and I can only imagine it's going to get worse. Even when you relax in Harbin, you still need to be tough. Make it stop, Pete. Make it stop. Man, Pete, oh, I'm, I'm wishing all of a sudden we're back in the water. Uh oh Yeah, I, I think the Chinese have this idea that whatever doesn't kill you will only make you stronger, and these two guys definitely subscribe to that philosophy. <laughs> Part of the reason for the deep kneading and twisting is to diagnose any medical problems I might have. Jeff, he's telling me that I've been having trouble with my stomach, that my eyes have been dry, which mm. is true, and uh, something about pain in my left ear. And then the last one, I don't know if I can uh, agree with, he says I've been having trouble taking a leak. <laughs> <laughs> People from Harbin are known for their adaptability, not just to the cold, but to cultural influences as well. Located so far north, Harbin is practically next door to Siberia, so the Russian influence in the city has always been strong. This is uh, one of the oldest parts of town, like uh, the Russian quarter, kind of. Okay. Uh -huh, like this building, it was the first fancy hotel and restaurant in Harbin City. Russian influence in Harbin began over a century ago, when they extended their Trans-Siberian Railroad all the way to Harbin. The Russians and Japanese controlled the city at various times from the early to mid 20th century. Harbin became a haven for Russian refugees after the revolution of 1917. The Japanese took control of the city during World War II. Then, the Soviets briefly occupied Harbin after the war, until the Chinese communists took it back in 1946. And that's how it's been ever since. So here we are, the St. Sophia's Church, the biggest Eastern Orthodox Church in all Asia. It was destroyed during the Cultural Revolution, and it was rebuilt or renovated in 1997. And why did they choose to rebuild it? Well, because, you know, the local government started to value, you know, the history of Harbin and protect the historical sites. And you know, this is so typical, you know, the most obvious Russian style architecture as you can see. You know, the 
the onion domes and spires and the stretch and it's beautiful it really is I mean the you know the just the light off the paintings up there and uh, you know it's pretty stunning this is a perfect time of day to be here too oh yeah light is beautiful so this is the central street it was created in 1898 and bricked in 1924. The city government turned it into a pedestrian commercial street like this, so to promote tourism and commerce. Wow. Yeah, it's absolutely freezing out here, but this place is hopping. Yeah, as the Chinese would say, it's a uh, hanruan now. It's uh, bustling. Yeah. <laughs> and there's all the international brands and everything. Harbin is adapting once again, this time to China's new economy. People have disposable income and buying power. Tourism and new business is vital to Harbin's growth and prosperity. Something no one thought about when we lived here. When we were small, we lived here. We lived here in Harbin, 1981. The changes are huge. I mean, the changes are huge. Yeah, yeah, changes since 1981. He says the most obvious changes are all the skyscrapers springing up and the influx of foreigners, like us, which you wouldn't have seen 15 or 20 years ago. Pete and I were both pretty young when we lived here, but we remember being the center of attention. Not too surprising since we are the only non-Chinese children most Harbiners had ever seen. But now we blend in with many other foreign faces, especially when people come to Harbin from all over the world to see the annual Harbin Ice Festival. Back when we were kids, we knew Harbin was famous all over China for holding a festival every winter to celebrate the city's most abundant winter product, frozen water. And Jowlin Park is where the Harbin Ice Festival got its start. Every winter since the early 1960s, sculptors have created masterpieces using ice cut out from the local Songhua River. And while my parents swear they took us to see it, the past 25 years have all but erased the memory. So this will be my first time to see what all the fuss is about. How much ice do you think it takes to pull this kind of stuff off? Oh man, they must drain the whole river. Watch your step. Every walkway of the park is lined with ice sculptures. Hundreds of them. And Huang has arranged for us to meet up with one of the men who carves them. The sculptures seem to come in all shapes and sizes. Most of them are quite traditional. Others, less so. You've got to be kidding me. Look at this, Pete. These are real fish. Oh, <laughs> how sad. This is the Chinese version of the frozen food section, only in China. This is exactly how I want to go. Naked, frozen in a block of ice, on display for 120 kwai for all the world to see. Huang shows up with his sculptor friend Zheng Shui Jun, who's promised to show us how it's done. Hey, hey what's up, Huang? Comes the ice sculptor, Mr. Zheng. Ah, ni hao. Ni hao. Ah, Zheng 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 Zheng. Ah, ni hao. Ah, Zheng Shui Jun. Ni hao. I'm Peter. 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 Ni hao. Nice to meet you. Jeff. Jeff. Oh, Jeff. 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 Oh. Yeah. Your hair is very cool. Yeah. Your hair is really cool. You can usually tell with Chinese artists, they often have long hair. And it's uh, it's kind of like, it's just a symbol that you're an artist. Right? Well, yeah. Yeah, and the tofa is cool. Zheng is one of the sculptors who are invited here to design and carve their own creations. A few foreign sculptors are invited as well. But it doesn't pay enough to make a full-time job. Zheng is actually a full-time painter. Finally, we come to a large block of ice, and the sculptor starts unpacking his tools, which include a chainsaw. That's serious ice tools right there. Does he notice, <laughs> does the ice change from year to year in terms of the quality of the ice, depending on how it freezes, or, or is it pretty much the same every year? 
。那就是说，这么多年来，这个每年的冰有什么变化吗？现在的环保的冰的质量要比以前好了一些。The quality of ice is actually improving along with the、uh, environmental protection. Oh, okay. okay. That's well, really that's cool. So, what what are you seeing here? What do you think? What's this going to be? You 看什么？你要你要冰雕什么？兄弟两个的头像。The two of us that's, together? A statue of Jeff and yeah. me. Yeah. Oh, that's excellent. Each artist gets to choose his subject matter, and our sculptor has decided to do a bas relief of the Hutchins brothers. Much looks like you right now, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Just one big dull block. <laughs> it does look like Peter. You've got this.、Uh, we call it egg-shaped head. <laughs> <laughs> hey, actually, that's a good thing in China, isn't it?、Uh, the egg-shaped. Oh yeah, yeah. Especially on girls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's rough. Oh that's man. Rough. To invest so much into a piece of art, knowing that it's going to melt in a few months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you got to be dedicated to the craft. It's almost like a performance art. <laughs> yeah, it really is in a lot of ways. Go go, pony there. Need to show you that. Ah, that hurts my feelings. He said,、uh, "Just a little fatter,、uh, and I'm a little skinnier." <laughs> That's great. It's because I'm healthy. You're you're, you're a little. So you. I think I think the translation actually means I'm a little stronger. Pete's a little weaker. I don't think so. Yeah. Every movement the sculptor makes is sharp and precise. We ask him what he does when he makes a mistake. He tells us he can't afford to make a mistake; they're irreversible. It's really impressive to watch him work. I mean, he just every move is really looks easy almost. I mean, he's just chipping away at the ice, but then it reveals something that that actually looks like a person. I I don't know if it looks like Jeff yet, but it does look like a person. I think I'm beginning to see Pete's head. I have depth. I have character. And he's just flat. Nothing.、Yep. Nothing going on there. You also have chipmunk cheeks, Jeff. Do I? Meanwhile, just a few yards away, there's a block of ice waiting for Pete and me to attack it. Jeff, what do you think we should、uh, do here? I'm thinking let's start small. Let's、uh, let's kind of go Michelangelo's David. You think? Yeah. I can yeah, see that、small. in there. Oh,、uh, you already messed it up, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> what, what part? Yeah. What, 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 are you, what exactly are you doing? I think all you're doing is just. I'm, I'm roughing in the head here. I don't think so. Yeah. How's the arm coming, Jeff? Spectacularly. Very well formed, I might say. Looks like you just took off the whole hand. This is pretty fun. This is fun. It's nice to be destructive and not get in trouble for it. <laughs> yeah. We peek over at what Jung is doing to see how it's really done. It's amazing that using the same tools as Jeff and I, Jung is actually able to create something that looks incredible. Ours, not so much. This isn't really working. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, we're done. Not because the statue is finished, but because we're really cold. Hey, you want to see what、uh, Jung thinks of our、uh, sculpture? Yeah,、uh, Jung Sensong, ni kui kan sha. Mi chui da hao bo ha. What do you think? Is it、uh, is it decent? <laughs> <laughs> it's an abstract <laughs> art. Yes, yeah, it's abstract. An abstract、uh, man. Yes.、Uh, body. Yes. Well, yeah, it's it's sort of the the faceless man. I mean, it could be all of us. You know, it could be none of us. But it's it's sort of the the every man. All right, let's check out what he's been up to. Oh, now this actually looks like something. And there we are, Jeff and Peter Hutchins immortalized in ice. One of us full-faced, healthy, and strong; the other one thin, frail, and weak. 
That's pretty cool. Yeah, this actually looks like something other than abstract man. <laughs> As Jung finishes up his masterpiece, we spot the perfect venue for two brothers who love a little competition, an ice slide. This brings back memories. Let's see who's thin, frail, and weak on this baby. Yeah, what are the rules of engagement? I don't think the rules matter. You're gonna get worked either way. One, two, two three. three. <laughs> oh, shoot! Here comes the wall! Oh, oh man! <laughs> Jeff's won the first heat, but I'm pretty sure it was because he had the better lane. You just got worked. I, I think that was all operator error, because I was straight shot down, flying. All right, well, if, you're, you so, if you're so confident, Jeff, I'm taking yours, you try my slip. I don't want to have to do this to you again. It's not good for your self-esteem. One, two, three. <laughs> As I suspected, this is the fast side. So we're even. I got you this time. Uh, oh. I'll give it to you. Once, once. The sun has been down for a while when we finally leave the park and the lights are just beginning to come on. Sure gets dark fast around here. And cold, extremely cold. See those ice lanterns, colorful. Yeah. Everything will be lit up in the evening. I bet there weren't three neon lights in Harbin back when we lived here. And now look at it. The one thing that has stayed the same is the cold. With the temperatures now well below minus 20 degrees, you can only wander the streets for so long before you have to warm up. And we've found just the place. Another Russian influence, the vodka bar. Made out of ice in honor of the ice festival. This we have to see. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> This bar serves only one brand, something called Russian Standard. But vodka is vodka, right? The bar seems to blend several parts of the story of Harbin together. The festival, tourists, ice, and the Russian influence still alive in the city today. Russia's finest vodka in an ice bar in Harbin. This will warm us up. <laughs> These are some pretty sizable shot glasses, I gotta say. Yeah, I don't think they're for the faint of heart, Jeff. Wait. You're not getting away with small shots. What the hell? <laughs> All right. These are huge shots. I think oh, these are like Lordy. three sizes too big. It's going to be painful. Let's make men of ourselves, Jeff. Uh, okay. Hand it over. Cheers. This has got to be one of the world's biggest shots in one of the world's coldest bars. Nostrovia, to your health. No, this is, <laughs> this is not going to do anything for my health. Wow. <laughs> That's not the best vodka. <laughs> That's not the best vodka I've ever had either. That stuff is brutal. Pour us another. The strange thing about this is that neither Jeff nor I are big drinkers. We haven't had a shot of hard liquor for years. But we're both feeling a little competitive after the ice slide. Come on. Just do it. I don't think I can do, do it. Just do it. It's your friend. Oh. Ready? Go. Oh, God. Shishia yeah, Harbin. Thank you, city of my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh, that burns all the way down the esophagus. Oh, oh God. Jeff, I can't feel my toes. <laughs> you don't have toes, Peter. <laughs> that wasn't funny, you shouldn't laugh at that. <laughs> Why am I laughing? Make it stop! Hey, where, where are you? 
But it doesn't stop. We don't stop. The next thing I know, we're drinking with the other patrons. All right. How? E. Ready? Harbin. Harbin. E. R. Sun. Holy. Ah. 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 Get in your uh, your propaganda pose. <laughs> The one thing a couple of brothers full of Russian vodka don't want to happen in this situation is for anyone we actually know to see us. Especially when they show up completely unannounced. And when it happens to be the man who brought you to China in the first place. Your dad. What? You are... You're kidding me! What? Wait, no way! Is you, guys, isn't it? you were kidding me, how drunk am I? <laughs> Dad, what are you doing here? <laughs> I'm really not here, I, I think I'm in the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy! Who did this? Pip, did you do this? Oh my goodness! <laughs> It turns out our dad is on his way to Cambodia with a stopover in Shanghai. So he made a call to our producer, and this surprise the boys while they're hammered is what they came up with. This is so random. Hey. I, I swear to you, that is our dad. That is my drunk brother. And oh, you're not drunk, no. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> and we had no idea he was coming here. That is insane. Wow. Hi. Hi! Oh, Good to see you, Bobs. <laughs> We're rushing our bottle. It's not the finest, but it's uh. standard. You are kidding me. <laughs> Cheers. Huh? E R Sun. Mmm. <laughs> this is freaking me out. Yeah, yeah. In complete honesty, I cannot believe my dad came all the way to Harbin, China, in the middle of North Korea, Siberia, and Mongolia to come out here and tell us, you know what, boys? I still love you. And no matter how Hold on, no, I, did, I didn't say that. Oh. But you mean it. I, I yeah, well, okay, okay. Come on, okay. Pops. Yeah. Right here? Yeah, plain one, plain one. 1981. This is a good guy right here. Yeah, right here. 2008. Nothing has changed. Everything has changed. <laughs> <laughs> My boys. That's true. It's not very often a couple of guys get to stagger back to the hotel with their dad, but this just happens to be one of those times. We're having fun now, but tomorrow, neither one of us will be able to get out of bed until daylight has come and gone. Which puts the recovery time for Russian Standard Vodka at about 36 hours. A day and a half after our encounter with Russian Standard Vodka and the monster hangover that followed, we managed to make it out to the street again. Everything seems unnaturally bright and colder than usual. We've only been out a few minutes and both of my feet already feel like wooden pegs. It's time for a pick-me-up and a Russian tea room catches our eye. Inside it feels like we've stepped back in time and place. It's more like a grandmother's sitting room in Russia than a restaurant in China. But since it was the Russians that put Harbin on the map in the first place, I guess it makes sense. Hey, see if we can get the waiter. Uh, Fu Yar. Uh, ni hao. What do you think they'll have? I mean, it's a Russian place. They've got to have uh, tea. You think they have caviar? Oh, oh yeah. Ex oh, caviar. Strong tea, caviar, toast. All right, let's eat. I get the feeling this may be the standard Russian hangover cure, and it can't come a moment too soon. That's good. The caviar is really good, and the tea is really strong, so gradually we're able to regain our wits and remember what we're supposed to be doing in Harbin. You know, we've seen so much of kind of the new, the stuff that's changed, all that, and I know in a city of, you know, nine or 10 million people, we've got to find some parts 
that are still as gritty and as kind of like meaty as you know as what Harbin used to be for us. Yeah. You know, so I, th I think we definitely should talk to Huang this afternoon and see if he can take us over. You know, take us over to that sort of area, kind of like the real, the grit. You know, the actual streets of Harbin, the stuff that's not new, the stuff that's you know exactly like it used to be. Yeah, I mean, where's where's the heavy industry? Where are the smokestacks? Where are the the people in the drab green outfits? You know, selling sweet potatoes on the side of the exactly. road. That's the stuff that I remember. Yeah. So you got the change, and you have the old, and yeah. we've just got to go out and find it. Back when we were kids, Harbin was a city full of industry. Most of the people worked in factories and lived in standard worker housing. I remember many gray days when smoke from all the factories hung low in the air, blocking out the sun. Harbin is still an industrial city with all kinds of food processing plants, manufacturing facilities, and high-tech development. But there seems to be a better balance with other types of industry like agriculture, transportation, education, and research. That kind of diversity has brought new people into Harbin and created a more livable city for everyone. There are parks and trees in much nicer living conditions, but the past is still scattered throughout the city. The place we grew up in has been demolished to make way for a high rise, but on the outskirts of the city, we begin to see the old railway worker neighborhoods and we're kind of happy to see they're still here to remind us of what Harbin used to look like. This is much more, I think, the Harbin that we remember. Yeah. Low buildings, grit, bikes, you know, people bundled up out in their neighborhoods. This is a very old part of the city. <laughs> he was asking if this place is going to be demolished soon. And I said, I don't know. You know, we're TV people. Uh, are there are a lot of the places around here being demolished? Not yet. But there is a plan to uh, turn the whole area into a kind of a Russian style park. Really? really? So it seems not even this place will be here much longer. And then where where will they move to? <laughs> They're giving them money to go somewhere? Exactly. Okay. This is happening throughout China. The old must make way for the new. Sometimes people are relocated to newly built towns and cities while others are simply given money to find new places to live on their own. So what, do, what does he think living in the cold does? Do you, do, is there any kind of characteristic that he thinks people from Harbin have that's different from the rest of the country? Uh-huh. You know, Harbin people are famous for its honesty. They're all very honest people. And we're also very friendly to Russians. We and Russians are partners always, before and now. It's, it's interesting. The Chinese classify the, the different types of people by the region they live in. So if you're from the Northeast, you're honest and hardworking. And it's, it's those people in Harbin. And, they, they built Harbin, and they're the ones who continue to adapt over the years. As we wander through the back alleyways, everyone says hello, and the Chinese equivalent of Cold enough for you? <laughs> many of the houses in this neighborhood are occupied by railroad and factory workers. And many of these families have been here since it was constructed nearly a century ago. This is so cool back in here. I love it. Yeah, this Very could be, cool. I mean, this could be 50 years ago. It could be. 
We got potatoes yeah. kicking around. Oh, that's cool. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Is that frozen? I think so. Wait, let me see. Yeah, that's yeah, as hard probably, as a rock. Probably around, probably. This gives you just a little bit of an idea of how absolutely frigid it is out here. You know, when, when we lived These here... These are frozen solid. <laughs> when we lived here 25 years ago or so, uh, they used to... People used to get potatoes and vegetables, cabbage, by the hundreds of kilos and bury them underground. So a lot has changed. I don't think people are still doing that. Well, people in the countryside still do that, but not in the city, because now you can buy vegetables in winter, but at that time, there weren't any vegetables in the shops in winter. So they have to store enough vegetables, you know, for them to go through all winter. Back on a main street, we come across a small food market. With the hot steam everywhere and great faces, it's a photographer's dream. It's been good to see the old face of the city I remember from my childhood. Gray, cold, gritty, steamy, healthy, hearty, Harbin. But I also can't wait to see something that wasn't here 20 years ago. The city's signature winter theme park. A city made entirely out of ice. About a decade ago, someone in Harbin got the idea of building a theme park slash city out of ice as a way of attracting tourists to the area during the coldest months. And it seems to have worked because we're here along with throngs of Chinese and little groups of Westerners like us. It's a great example of how the Harbiners have turned what is usually the dead of winter into a time for old style celebration and new style money making. I can't get over the size of uh, this stuff here. Just the, the blocks of ice alone are huge, not to mention the sculptures they're making. Yeah, some of them are life-size. Thousands of builders descend on Harbin every year to create this spectacular landscape. And it's all built in just over two weeks. Sculptors come here from all over the world, including Europe, Canada, the United States, and more. It's really become a major cultural exchange that brings over 8 million visitors and about $1 billion here every year. No wonder the city's looking so good. You know how all this started though, right? They would freeze water in buckets and then hollow it out so that they could put, you know, a candle down in there to make sort of their own little lanterns. Yeah, because, you know, they didn't have money as well to buy, you know, real red lan lanterns right. for the Spring Festival. Right. But they have, like, you know, plenty of ice. <laughs> There's an ice Buddha, an ice warrior, and even an ice Westminster Abbey. There are ice creations of every description. To get a really good perspective of the whole thing, we have to climb a bunch of ice stairs up to an ice Acropolis. I love that there's this entire world of ice and not a single handrail to be found. It's just, it's gotta be the world's biggest lawsuit waiting to happen. The ice acropolis is pretty impressive, and so is the view. Look out, I mean, look at this thing out here. Oh yeah, that's, uh, that's said to be the tallest ice tower in Asia. Really? We're cold and hungry, but we'll never forgive ourselves if we don't stay until after the sun sets and see what the ice city looks like at night. So we wait until the sun sets and get to see the ice town in a totally different light. And it's different, all right. It's packed with people. The Chinese have always been fascinated with light at night. After all, they invented fireworks. And lighting this place isn't cheap. It costs around $4,000 a night. It's an impressive sight. One that really illustrates how the people of Harbin have transformed their cold, industrial city into a beautiful example of the adaptability of the Chinese people. I don't like the look of this. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! 
they seem to have found a balance between old and new, and work and play. <laughs> it's all part of China's evolution from a developing country into a first world one. all in the space of one generation. Our generation. It's only fitting that we say goodbye to the city of our childhood, in the place that first put Harbin on the map, the railroad station built by the Russians almost a century ago, and modified by the Chinese many times since. Man, I'm so, I'm so glad that we got to spend this time with you up here. You know, I, I can't get over how much Harbin has changed in the last 25 plus years. Well, you know what hasn't changed though is the people. I mean, they're still the same tough Dongbei, Northern Chinese people we remember. It's been so much fun hanging out with you again, Huang. Thanks, thanks a lot for taking us around. No problem, I'll miss you guys. Yourself, all right? You too. Whoever said you can't go home again probably had a right. The city we're saying goodbye to isn't the city either of us remember. But living in Harbin definitely shaped both of us. We've got the work ethic, the hardiness, and the ability to adapt to changing circumstances, which we're going to need as we keep on getting lost in China.